Okay, so this is my ninth video um, pertaining to Eric Dubay's first film called Level. And uh, I recorded eight videos so far going through uh, the first five, I believe, were for things that Eric Dubay himself said for the most part. And then six was uh, the, uh, the rapper guy, ODD TV. Seven was, uh, what, uh, Murphy, Eddie Murphy, I think his name was. No, I admit, was it Ed? I don't know. Um, and, um, what was the next one? The tattoo guy. Yeah. And that was my eight videos. I got that far into the project and, um, then life came around and I got a little uh, distracted by some other things, and I never did finish this project, because there's three more guys in this film that have not been addressed yet, and one of them is this guy right here, Eddie Bravo, and um, this is the most foul-mouthed guy you'll ever encounter, it seems. This guy's got some real bad Legion demons in him. They all do, uh, in my opinion, but this guy's potty mouth is so horrible. I, you know, see little little cuts here in the audio where I had to take out a swear word or something. And then there's plenty of other cuts where I cut a, the, the video out, too, uh, just because of the swear word. This guy is major, major potty mouth. Anyways, he's... Um, He's got his little section here, and a lot of what he says is just r repeating the same stuff that's already been said in other, uh, other people's presentations. So there's not really much new here from this guy, um, Eddie Bravo, and then after him is this guy, um, and this guy's a piece of work, too, as far as his uh, vulgarity, yet he's trying to stick up for the God of creation, <laughs> the same God that wrote a book called James that specifically tells you not to be using profane language. But uh, they don't care. The only thing they care about is that the Creator created a flat plane and that's it. So that, that guy, it's a lot of repetition of just the same, same arguments again. But then there's this guy. And this guy, um, Tanner Stewart, apparently this guy is made of money. This guy's got a lot of money, and I bet you he is the financier for this entire project. He's got to be the money behind making this film. Um, and he's, uh, he's very, very big on showing you everything he's got and all his cars and everything that might've already been shown in a previous, previous video here. Um, so this guy is going to try and make you think that he's, he's real smart because he's got a lot of money, but that, uh, that doesn't prove anything. Um, I think this guy's one of the dumbest out of all three of them, and I don't use that word just as an insult. I never use words like that as just insults. I think this guy is lacking scientific awareness. Uh, you know, I, I keep saying that some people just have it. Some people just don't have it. And what's that it? It's just the natural wisdom to be able to understand physics. You know, when the people say, th when the flat earthers say stuff like, how do you get water to stick to a spinning ball? It's just insane. Or dare I say, dumb to think that way. It's not wise to think that water would somehow have to stick to the bottom of a ball, whereas it stays on the top of the ball because that's the way gravity is pushing towards the South Pole. They don't understand three dimensions. They don't understand gravity because gravity defeats their entire flat Earth belief, so they have to throw it out, and therefore now why does water stick to a ball? 
it's just very, very insane uh, what these people think. So I, I didn't bother um, with these three, or I didn't get around to it, but I feel like I have to complete this project to get these three guys addressed and um, refuted. Um, but to be honest, I really don't have it in my heart to spend so much more time. I already did the eight videos before this, so I'm hoping I can just breeze through all three of these in one video and get this project over with. So let's see what um, Eddie Bravo's got to say. Isn't it weird that every space documentary, all the series, I had them all, Joe had them all, we watch them all the time. Beyond Venus, 93 million miles from the sun, is Earth. It's great oceans forming the clouds and air currents which warm and irrigate the planet. I thought I was better than Pete because I knew so much about space. <clears throat> and every now and then I'd watch all that and wonder <laughs> and wonder, what? This is all cartoons. And every now and then I yeah. think to myself, it's weird that we're not watching any actual footage of space. It's all CGI. All DVDs on space are all CGI. There's nothing real. And everyone watches that. They believe it. The narration is all programming. What's above us and what we're on, we're being lied to. Do we have... A okay, so the, the whole argument is that everything is CGI. And this, this has been discussed over and over and over again with the Flat Earthers, but they refuse to believe the actual truth. Many of these photos that they keep calling CGI are not CGI. CGI is uh, computerized graphics. Um, it's what they use for making films, for making Hollywood movies, when it's obviously fiction what they're doing, so they have to create a fictional uh, backdrop or whatever for the film. We know those are fiction. We know that they're fake. Those are CGI. But then they take that word and they, they throw it over to these photos that NASA are talking about, and they just label it. They slap that label on it. It's CGI. It's fake. But they're not. They're not CGI. They're not fake. They're composites, usually. And a composite is simply a bunch of photographs stitched together to make one big photograph. That's ultimately what a composite really is when it shows you a photo of the Earth. Why? Because where would the camera need to be to take a photo of the entire Earth? It would have to be really, really far away from the Earth. And there happens to be something that does have a camera on it that's that far away from the Earth that can take pictures. I believe it's called Voyager 2. There was Voyager 1. I believe it is way, way out there now. It is beyond the solar system. It's further out... Uh, uh, in the solar, or past the solar system, Voyager 1 is, uh, but there was also Voyager 2, and if my memory serves correctly, there is um, photos of the entire Earth being taken from Voyager 2, and they're just regular photos. You can take them at any time. Now, do you see the entire Earth? Well, it depends on where the sun is. You might see half the Earth at the time, because the other half is just dark, the photos do exist, and all they do is they find excuses such as, well, they have to be composites. They find excuse after excuse after excuse to just dismiss all of them. Now, he's going to bring up one of the particular photos, actual photos, and he's just going to call it fake. Just, just hand wave it off and just call it fake, and he's not going to provide any evidence that it is, in fact, fake. Hubble, why don't you point it at the Earth and get some awesome shots okay, of where yeah. we live? Right, the Hubble argument. Well, we'll get to that fake photo, supposedly, uh, eventually here. But the Hubble argument. Do you have any idea what it would take to 
flip around the Hubble telescope in space. It was designed to photograph things that are far away from the Earth, pointing the other direction from the Earth. So why are you expecting us to be able to take the entire thing and just flip it around 180 degrees as if that's easy? That would be probably a lot of money to do that just to pacify you flat earthers, which, (laughs) come on, let's be honest, a high percentage of you flat earthers will just claim it was fake anyways, even if, you, even if they did what you wanted them to do. You would just claim, oh, it's just fake. They came up with some CGI. So how do, how do you prove that? Even if we did what you wanted us to do and flipped around the Hubble telescope for millions of dollars to have to do that, meanwhile, putting everything that they're currently working on on hold because now you can't look at the things that are billions of light years away, just so that we can look at the Earth for the flat earthers. It's just insane. All the pictures and images from space are CGI. None of them are real. See, none of them are real. None. All they do is assert that there is absolutely no real photographs from space. But they're lying better yet, they're just not right about that. I don't know if these guys are actually lying. They believe other people's lies. Their claim that none of these are real photographs is just their own blind faith. They want to believe that to protect their flat earth fantasy, so they're just going to regurgitate that line. It's all fake. It's all CGI. And that's just not true. We haven't gone past that. What, are you telling me that that's okay? We could just gloss over that? And they admit that they're all CGI, except for one. And- no, that nobody is admitting that they are all CGI. You've, re, um, you've paraphrased what has actually been said and flipped it into your flat earth vernacular, claiming that NASA admits they're all fake. But that's not true. You take what's actually said and then twist it into that particular sentence. It's not true. In 1972, which is fake. Okay, and see, there you go. I'm going to actually play that one again. They admit that they're all CGI, except for one in 1972, which is fake. See, there you go. How do you, how do you deal with a person that is this... Uh, brainwashed into thinking that even the blue marble, the 1972 shot from the Apollo, I don't remember which number mission it is, this 13, 14, 15, 16, it's not 11, um, they're claiming that that shot is fake. And that's all he said, except for one, which is fake. Where's your proof that this is fake? Because I've got videos from a professional photographer that explains using empirical science and using actual uh, photography principles, which are ultimately scientific in nature. Um, And he explains exactly why that photo is absolutely real. And he's a photographer, so... I believe him about that, and I believe him about the NASA photos from uh, the moon landing, etc. So all you're doing here is claiming, blindly, without any evidence, a baseless assertion that that's a fake photo. It's not a fake photo. How do you prove it's fake? By just calling it fake over and over and over again? They have one picture... They say one is real, 1972, all the rest are CGI. I want- no, nobody's calling them CGI except you. And none of them are c- being called fake except by you. They are not fake. They are not CGI. They are composites, which are simply a bunch of small photos pieced together to be a big photo. Simple as that. 
I want to see a picture. I want to see tens of thousands of them. I want to see in the sun over here and the moon over there. Okay. He wants a picture of this. Now, this picture is obviously some form of CGI, whatever you want to call it. It's a computer-generated um, imagery of what we basically understand of the universe. Um, uh, I suppose it's probably to scale for the most part. The moon and the sun look relatively the same size. I don't know if the moon should be out that far compared to... Now, of course, the sun is 400 times further away, too, so it's that sort of thing. But here's the thing, and this is what they don't think about. Where would the camera need to be to take this photograph? It would have to be right, right here, <laughs> wherever this vantage point is starting from, which would be many, many, many miles away from the Earth over here on the other side of where the moon is on the far side here, obviously. The moon, the, the camera would have to be so extremely far away from the Earth to take a photograph like this. There's no cameras out there that can take a, cam a, a photo like this. So where's the camera going to come from to take this shot? If you want tens of thousands of photos like this, then send up your cameras. Send up your rockets with that particular mission in mind and go ahead and get your, uh, your Tanner Stewart guy to, uh, to uh, fund the whole thing because that'll be real cheap, right? Sending up cameras into space to, to get photographic evidence from this far away. You should have the photos, if you put the rockets up there, you should have the photos, um, oh, by, I don't know, two, three, four years from now. <laughs> it's not an easy request that you're asking, and this is the reason why they use composites, because it's not possible. It's not, well, it is possible, but it's not extremely easy to get a camera far enough away from the Earth to take a picture of the whole thing at once. And this is the physics that these guys just refuse to understand. There's people should have posters and all, all over the world people should have these epic pictures of the Earth from space with the moon over here and the sun over there and the planets. There's none. Because the cameras aren't far enough away. Simple as that. And you, Eddie Bravo, potty mouth, whatever kind of star, podcast star you seem to think you are, you don't have the brains to be able to figure that out? No wonder you fell for Flat Earth. Literally zero. They do sometimes exaggerate. No, no, literally zero is what Dubé just said. No, that's not true. He's lying. Like claiming they used a NASA camera. 1.6 million miles away to take this. Mm, mm, yes, claiming, claiming, claiming. Now, what does that say? A NASA camera aboard the Deep Space Climate Observatory, Discover, right, has captured a unique view of the moon as it passed between the spacecraft and Earth. Okay. So this Discover, um, I don't know, I'm thinking of that in the same kind of way as Voyager and Voyager 2. Just some sort of spacecraft that they put out there to just keep going and discover what you can. And so apparently the dis this Discover one is doing the same relative thing that Voyager and Voyager 2 did, I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't really need to look this stuff up, but he's claiming this is fake from Discover. Where's your proof that it's fake? Now, watch what he does. Used a NASA camera 1.6 million miles away to take this alleged video of the dark side of the moon. It doesn't take a genius to see how undeniably computer-generated this image is. 
Okay. So there's his proof that this is fake, is that it doesn't take a genius to be able to figure out how computer-generated this actually is. Well, I actually technically am very close to being, by IQ standards, a genius. Um, Closer than Eric Dubé is. I'll put that up there. How's that? I don't see any evidence that this is photoshopped. So am I just not smart enough to not see it? Because he's showing you along this line here that it's obviously computer generated. Where is it? I I don't see this evidence that it is obviously generated. So let's let's try it again. And yet you think we are the moronic ones? I would rather... You're the one putting something on your own screen, your own video that you're producing here that is being claimed as being and yet oh, let me go back here the computer generated this image is how computer generated it is take a genius to Does, doesn't take a genius see how undeniably com- to see how undeniably computer generated this image is i'm not seeing it i who sees it who's who's seeing it are you talking about how it gets a little yellowish there with the cloud cover underneath it, which would be a refraction sort of deal going on with the edge of the moon there? Where is this? It's so obvious that it's computer generated. Where is it? It's not here. And yet He's just asserting that it's so obvious and then throwing in a laugh track behind it to make the gullible flat earthers feel like, yeah, it's so obvious. It's right there on the screen. Can't you see it? And no, I don't see it. Where is there proof that this is computer generated? I don't see that. Am I the blind one? Go ahead and call me blind. I'm fine with that. Yeah, you think we are the moronic ones? I would rather be thought as a moron for not trusting criminals than a sell out and a traitor for defending them. the reality what, is the things that come up- okay so he's gonna get into now the credibility of nasa so now we're not dealing with actual physical sciences anymore we're not looking at photographs anymore we're not looking at a photograph and just blindly claiming it's cgi like he just did now we're going to say these people are bad people, therefore you can't believe anything they say. Come out of your mouth. Are you saying something that a defense attorney would say? Or are you saying something that a prosecuting attorney would say? I, when it comes to the government, that criminal, that's like John Gotti. I'm saying that a prosecuting attorney would say. Not saying, we'll prove it. We'll prove it. It's a criminal. Without a doubt, whatever's coming from the government, you need, I need some irref- I need the kind of evidence that that would shut down a case if i don't see the evidence why would i believe it? what is guess what eddie bravo your case has been on trial here on youtube or facebook or the internet the social uh channels that are out here for the human population to be able to deal with these controversies and your flat earth claims have been on trial for the last 10 years since Dubé started this con and all of your claims have been systematically proven false I'm just doing it again for fun so to speak (laughs) actually my main purpose of this is I'm doing it from a young earth creationist perspective point of view compared to the secular people out there that are refuting flat earth. You know, there's Professor Dave, there's Dave McKeegan. They're not doing it from a Christian point of view. They're doing it from a Darwinist billions of years point of view. So, you know, they're not going to be 100% on what they say. Um, And then there's these flat earthers that claim to be Christians. They could even claim to be young earth, I suppose. But they're very, very, very wrong about the shape of the earth, and I have yet to meet a 
flat earther that claims to be a, a biblical Christian who actually follows the Bible and actually acts like a repentant Christian should. So you got flat earthers who are lost, you got secular people who are still lost, and then you've got young earth creationists who follow and re repent of their sins and follow the Bible. This is where the truth is. Earth is a young globe. And so that's why I'm focusing on this too, because I don't know of any other young earth, and, uh, young earth creationists other than like Danny Faulkner from uh, Answers in Genesis. And I know Kent Hovind has done a couple of videos about Flat Earth. Um, so there's really not a lot of young earthers out there that are tackling the Flat Earth people. So here I am. Grab you have no idea. Okay, next question. <laughs> So oh, getting into gravity. You're telling me gravity is strong enough to hold oceans on. Now, now look at that. Look, look, look at what we just saw there. See, this is how they think or how they fail to think. To hold oceans. Okay, water goes around a thing it's and all falls off the bottom. Now, why would it do that? Hmm, maybe because the gravity of the earth itself is stronger than whatever this little ball is and of course i'm pretty sure that this is obviously cgi <laughs> so they're using cgi for their examples but uh but nasa is not allowed to use cgi or computer generated imagery for the sake of exemplifying what they do in space. They're not allowed to do that. But flat earthers, they, they can use CGI to, to show how silly it is for water to stick to a ball. <laughs> Onto it, battling inertia from the spin. So gravity's holding oceans, inertia's trying to pull it out and make it fling. Skyscrapers would fling off the earth, but this okay. gravity... Now, what is wrong with this argument? He's holding these. It's so strong. It's holding these. But it can't hold a helium balloon. <laughs> okay. All of this made it look like <laughs> the Earth is spinning super fast. Inertia from the spin. So gravity's holding ocean. Inertia from the spin. Oceans. Inertia's trying to pull it out and see, make it fling. See, Skyscrapers see. would fling off the Earth. But this gravity's holding these. It's so strong. It's holding these. But it can't hold a helium balloon. Things that are less dense go up. See, it's just amazing how they think that the Earth is spinning so extremely fast that everything would fling out into space. They refuse to believe that Earth spins only once per 24 hours. That's an extremely slow rotation speed. Once per day is not fast. Why do they think it's fast? Because at the equator, it ends up moving 1,000 miles every hour. And that number makes them panic and makes them think, oh, we're all going so extremely fast. But that's actually nothing when we're dealing with an Earth that is so huge. So this entire argument that we should um, all fling off into space if we were spinning at a thousand miles an hour at the equator. It's bad physics. They don't understand that it's not important the thousand miles an hour per uh, thousand miles per hour number is not really the relevant number to be basing your opinions off of. Spinning once per day. How much water is going to fling off your tennis ball if you spin that thing only once in 24 hours? Nothing is going to fling off of it. Hmm. Interesting. But it can't hold a helium balloon. Things that are less dense go up. Things that are more dense go down. That's Why? Now, w listen to the rest of his sentence. Has nothing to do with gra- Has nothing to do with gravity. The entire reason that Newton came up with the concept of gravity was because there's no answer to the reason why density makes things go up and down. Why do things fall down if they are more dense? Why down? 
Why does density make it go up and down? You don't have an answer for that. Neither buoyancy nor density explain why they go up and down to begin with. That's the point that you flat earthers just can't understand because you're already too brainwashed by these Dubai videos. Density only explains why they go in a specific order amongst themselves. Why does the car go down while the helium balloon goes up? Density, correct. But why does the car go down and not sideways and not up? Why that particular direction? That's where gravity comes in. Gravity is the reason why density and buoyancy work. You don't have density or buoyancy if there is no gravity. That's basic science. And these guys just refuse to believe it because they'd rather believe in this fantasy. They'd rather believe that they're onto something special that the rest of the world is all fooled on. And that makes them, the flat earthers, feel like they're super smart and everybody else isn't. Hmm. Where's gravity at with butterflies? You would think that if gravity is so strong it's holding skyscrapers down to it, we would be flat on the ground. There is gravity. Uh, it's just so fast, you know, the, the sentence here, a sentence there, where do I stop? So let's do the butterfly thing. Butterfly. You would think. Yeah. So why can't gravity hold butterflies down when it can hold oceans down? Uh. <clears throat> Butterflies have wings because butterflies actually do the exact same thing that water does. They fall to the ground. Doesn't matter if it's an ocean full of water, it falls to the ground. It doesn't matter if it's a butterfly with wings on it. If it stops flapping at wings, it will fall to the ground. Gravity affects both the oceans and the butterflies, and the helium balloons, the same way. The difference is that butterflies have wings. They have muscles, I think. <laughs> they have something that is able to flap those wings and create lift so that they defy gravity. That should be very obvious. So, gravity can hold down oceans, but it can't hold down birds. The dumbest argument a flat earther ever makes. Because flight is obviously defying the acts of gravity. Because of the wings. If, if anybody is using this kind of argument... They have no ability to understand physics. It, 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 they're just not programmed that way. God did not create them with the ability, the natural ability that most of us have to understand physics. These flat earthers don't have it. And that's why they end up falling victim to all the fake science in Dubé's films. That if gravity so strong it's holding skyscrapers down to it, we will be flat on the ground. There is gravity all the way out to the moon and beyond. Warner Von Braun, which is true, Braun was the director of all six moons. Okay, so now we're finally getting into the um, don't trust NASA stuff. Missions, and he's a Nazi. Is that not a comic book? That's a comic, comic, comic yeah, book. Okay, and so we're finally to the end here of... Uh, Eddie Bravo's uh, wonderful contribution to this film. 50% <laughs> of his words are vulgarity. I'm hyperbolizing on that. Um, okay, so, yeah. Uh, Operation Paperclip, this is a historical uh, truth that happened from World War II. After World War II, when the Nazis were defeated, many of their scientists were brought here to the United States. And they became our scientists. So now we have Nazi scientists inside NASA. Now, uh, that is a big red flag, isn't it? 
Isn't that something that should make you go, oh, I don't know about that. And that's true, actually. There is some things that we probably shouldn't completely trust about our own government that involves bringing Nazis into it. Sure, I I can see reasons for distrust there. But none of this has anything to do with the shape of the earth. All it is is just character assassination. That's all this is. It's just the attempt to badmouth, or shall we say an ad hominem. That's really the logical fallacy to, to call out here. It's an ad hominem. It's just bashing this guy because he came from the Nazis. And, you know, I, Werner, Braun, Werner von Braun came from the, uh, the Nazi regime of Hitler, yes. But how Nazi was he himself? Was he really up there with Hitler going, yes, kill all those Jews? Was he really up there like that? Or was he just a scientist doing his job for his country? And who knows? He was probably happy to get out of the Hitler uh, Third Reich or whatever. I don't know. I'm, I'm just speculating on that you can't throw out everything that came from NASA just because of where Werner von Braun came from. And maybe the other, uh, some other scientists with him. He's just the most famous name out of all of them. So it's just ad hominem. It's just character assassination and trying to make you think everything NASA says is automatically a lie just because of where it comes from based on Operation Paperclip and all of that. So I I don't find that to be a uh, scientific explanation of anything. It's just an ad hominem. So he, he goes on here and all of this stuff about, you know, how NASA is, NASA is so evil. And there, it was all music underneath this. There's, I'm not skipping any uh, spoken word or anything like that. Um, and uh, uh, this is one of those, you know, um, where they go through and they splice a whole bunch of different video together and th- and there's no spoken word under it. So you you don't get to hear what that guy just said. And I think my computer's slowing down a little bit. You know, you don't get to hear what's said in this. It's just one of those video montages with a bunch of demonic music underneath it. All of it designed to try and make you hate NASA so that you just throw out anything they say. Okay, so I'm done with Eddie Bravo. This guy. We come from this big bang and fluffy puffy uh, pixie fairy dust and and unicorn farts and all of a sudden uh, consciousness just, just came out of that. No, it was designed, it's not an accident. Everything according to the bogus Darwinian theory of evolution, all of it points to a godless, atheist, demonic, demoncrat lie. Amen. 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 Everything that guy just said is absolutely true. But he hasn't said anything about the shape of the earth yet, because that's where he goes off the plank. NASA is a corporation, and they are the same people who run Disney. In fact, they are... (sighs) Okay, so we're going to do some more character assassination now by lumping in NASA with Disney and then showing you how fake Disney is. (laughs) Disney is a storytelling organization. Everything they do is known fiction. So they're not trying to make anybody believe that this is, that something's real inside Disney. They are very, very similar because what they do is they entertain people. They're not teaching people. Uh, They don't want people to know the truth about the cosmos. They're entertaining them with CGI images. Okay, more CGI claims. Every image you see, image, not photo, every single one of them, all of those are 
computer generated. See, it's just the same thing that Eddie Bravo did. They're just blatant, uh, baseless assertion that everything you see, everything is always CGI. It's always fake. There's zero photographic reality to any of it at all. That's what they keep baselessly asserting to brainwash these flat earthers into thinking that every single thing they see is automatically fake. It's not true. They are based off of photographs to begin with. It's not some guy in a computer lab somewhere just totally digitizing a fake planet from, uh, from his own imagination. These are taking, they are taking photos of them and then using the photos to turn it into a computerized version of the photo that's better resolution and, you know, that we can see the whole planet or rotating. You know, you don't get a photo of a rotating planet, but if they want to make imagery, imagery of a three-dimensional planet rotating, then they'll take one side of it and turn it into a 3D rendering of it, and then now it's a CGI version, according to this guy. But it was based off of an original photograph to start with. And all they do is just automatically assert, it's all fake. Images. They are not photos. Everyone you see on Google is a CGI image. It is not a photo. And it's just a baseless assertion. He can't prove that to you. They don't bother trying to prove that to you. They just tell you, it's all fake, it's all fake, believe us. And you can't tell that they are CGI, either there's two things wrong with you. You are... Okay, this is kind of funny, actually. You're either retarded... You're either retarded or... Or you are mentally deranged. Which are... Mm, both demonic problems, so to me, it's just the same thing. If, if a person is mentally retarded, I believe that is a demonic block. And if the person is mentally deranged, that's a demonic block. So either way, you got demons. And this guy wants to be such the big Christian, huh? You do not have control of your own mind. You, you. Your mind has been indoctrinated. It has been brainwashed. You are talking to yourself right now. And you've been duped, and you still believe in Santa Claus and the upside-down spinning Santa ball. <laughs> this, this is a flat earther telling us that we still believe in Santa Claus. I don't believe in Santa Claus. It's a lie created by parents over centuries that have been lying to their children. My parents lied to me. I don't believe in Santa Claus, but I also don't believe in Flat Earth because of actual science. Which the Jesuits invented in 1542. Prior to 1542, every single culture, all our this intelligent ancestors will be rolling in their graves knowing that this stupid progeny actually think they live on a spinning globe. This is not true. We know from documented history that the Greeks discovered that the Earth was a planet, or they, they proved it, actually. Uh, they proved that it was a uh, planet um, during the Greek Empire, a couple of hundred years before Christ, even. So we've known... We've known as a humanity that the Earth is, in fact, a globe, a planet, and not a flat plane for longer than 2,000 years now. And you're just doing this baseless assertion that every single ancient people knew that we were on a flat plane. You're just asserting that. It's not true. You want to believe it, so you assert it with such authority to try and fool the masses. And unfortunately, a few people do end up falling for it. That people bow down to for their false ideology. Zoom up to being this. What, what, is, what, what is that zooming in 
or zo- you're zooming in using what? A P one thousand Canon f- uh, camera, the the P nine hundred. You guys love these super zoom in cameras, and you always keep saying that if you use a P nine hundred or a P one thousand Canon, such or other, whatever they call them you can see the ship come back in uh, to view after it goes over the horizon, right? You guys keep using that. Are you using that for Venus, too? Because if you are, you are a huge fool. Because that planet is way further away than that ship on the horizon was. So if you think that that camera has enough... um, Zooming in power to deal with planets. Oh, but they're not as far away as we claim they are, right? So they look through their low-powered cameras, and this is all they see. Zoom Stuff up to like Mars that, and you will see they are right. This is Mars, they are really? Stars. That's Mars. I would love to understand. Who took this f- video, what camera it was through, what the zoom level was. We get zero of the specs here. We don't have any of the data to try and figure out what these videos they're showing you are actually of. That's Mars, huh? Hence all the intelligent pre-Copernican astrologers, Ptolemaic astrologers like myself, taught that all... So that's, that's Mars. Through what? Through what kind of camera did you just do that through? We don't get that information because I'm pretty sure when I was a child and owned a telescope that my father bought me, I was able to look at Mars and Saturn and Jupiter and Venus. And they didn't look like this. They looked like the fake photos that you find on Google. I saw it with my own eye through a telescope when I was 10. So how exactly are you proving that these planets are fake or something? The planets are wandering stars. They are luminous bodies. Oh, that's right. They're not even actual planets to them. Or at least to this guy. Because none of them have their stories straight with each other. It's not like they all have the same beliefs about everything. So this guy thinks that the planets don't even really exist. They're just blips of light like any star is. Whew. Just as the Egyptians said, just as the Greeks and the Mayans and the Aztecs said, just as our intelligent ancestors said. Where's your proof for any of that? Show me the documented proof that all of these cultures believe in flat earth. If all the stars, as they say, in every constellation... And even if they all believed in flat earth, that still doesn't prove anything. ...constellation are all at different depths. By millions of light years, how come the thousands and thousands and thousands of years of hurtling through the sky there is no distortion no difference in luminosity of stars Where's- um okay so that's the why are all the stars still the same after going flying through space argument which has uh, i've dealt with it so many times i don't remember if i dealt with it in one of the previous videos for this, for refuting Dubai. Um, But this is just basic physics. Earth is surrounded inside the Milky Way galaxy by a whole bunch of other stars that are also in the Milky Way galaxy. Any direction we look, we see those stars. And every star we see with the naked eye here from Earth is in our Milky Way galaxy. We don't see any star with the naked eye or even a galaxy outside of our own Milky Way. Having said that, 
If we are spinning inside the Milky Way, then any direction we look, we will see other stars within that Milky Way. And they are also moving with us. So as we spin through the Milky Way galaxy, so do all the other stars moving relatively the same direction. Therefore, year after year after year, we all look the same because we're all just keeping the same relative <sighs> configuration as we're just rotating around inside an incredibly huge Milky Way galaxy. Now, I do know that Polaris is our North Star today, but it has not always been. Thousands of years ago, it was not the North Star. There was a different star that was more closely related to the uh, axis of the rotation of the Earth. But it has gradually changed slightly to the point where today, Polaris is the, the star directly above that axis point. <sighs> supposed to be flying yeah, okay and then there's this flying through space at in such incredible speeds why doesn't everything just blow off because there's no air there's no wind they they take this video that somebody made and they make it seem like everything's going so fast that the wind would make everything blow off or something like that they're not, they, they use the phrase, everything is flying through space. It's not flying, it's floating. There's no wind resistance. There's no propulsion. We're just moving. That's all. Nobody pushed us um, other than God. God set all of this motion in, in motion. Okay, but there's, there's no, see how the sun here has this line coming from it as if like it's a jet flying through, through the air and there's a contrail coming from behind it, right? That's what this looks, makes it look like. And all of these planets that are spiraling around, they have these little lines that come back from it as if it's like an airplane contrail, right? And it makes it seem like everything's going so fast, the wind would wreak havoc on all of this. And, but that's not what's really going on. There's no air. There's no wind resistance. There's no friction. So the movement of the planets through space, even like this, so to speak, is still not going to have any sort of friction problems where things are flung off or things are blown off into space. It doesn't work that way. Breakneck speeds. Breakneck speeds. Speeds through the galaxy and yet the same boring stars keep turning over our flat stationary plane Earth forever and ever and ever and ever. It's just a lack of... It's a... Argument from incredulity for him. He just can't believe that it's possible for the planet to be moving at such a speed through a galaxy that's also moving through such a speed. They just can't believe that these speeds are possible because they think that if you go 100 miles an hour on the freeway, and stick your head out the sunroof that you're going to lose your hat, and th how could you possibly be traveling through the solar system like that? All our hats would be blown off. All right? It, it, they don't think. Ugh. Moving. So we are not moving. Uh, so assertion and assertion, right? We're supposed to be traveling at, get this number in your head, 66,600 mile an hour. Six. Okay, first of all, that number is not exact. It is rounded, obviously. And how convenient that you skip the other two zeros at the end of the number so that you can just pick, cherry pick out your 666 
which biblically is the number of a man. Okay, so cherry-picking this number here doesn't prove anything. Um, and, and then throwing in the Baphomet thing and, you know, all of this, it's just meant to look more demonic than it really is. The number 666 is a regular number that sometimes gets used in regular life. So just because the number 666 is found somewhere does not automatically mean it's Satan. It's definitely part of a lie because this number is here. Therefore, it's got to be Satan's doing. No, no, it doesn't work like that. The Queen of Sheba gave 666 talents of gold, I think it was. Um, maybe it was silver. I think it was gold. Um, to um, King Solomon. Does that somehow mean that the Queen of Sheba was the Antichrist? No. The number gets used basically twice in Scripture. And I don't think there's any connection between the two, to be very honest with you. I don't think there's any connection. Just because the number 666 happens to be in the supposed calculations, and that's it, miles per hour. What if you do it at kilometers per hour? You know, then it's completely changed. So this is contrived. This is just a contrived argument to try and make you think, NASA's a bunch of liars. 666, that's how fast the Earth is orbiting. If you are a grotard, grotard, that's what you are. Name caller, that's what you are. You are stupid. Stupid beyond your wildest imagination. And isn't it amazing how much bravado this particular guy has when you know that generally every one of us out here in regular, <laughs> the, the, the people who aren't scientifically inept, we understand physics, we get these, uh, these arguments that uh, our fellow globe people make you know, Dave McKeegan, we can watch his videos and they make 100% sense. But these guys are calling us stupid, whereas we would very easily look back at them and go, that's projection, sir. We're not the ones that are stupid here. Now, I don't like arguing like that at all. I don't want to call these flat earthers stupid, you know, like this guy says. I don't want to call them stupid. It's not their intellect that's really the problem. It's a wisdom issue because not everybody has the wisdom to be able to understand physics like I do, like, like most people do. Some people just don't get that wisdom uh, hardwired into their brain. So it's not stupid. It's just a matter of wisdom. But beyond that, it then becomes a matter of demons. It is a, I firmly believe that there is a spirit of confusion that is able to take advantage of their lack of wisdom in physics. And then that spirit of confusion comes in and confuses them to make everything make sense to them from the flat earth side of things. And then they call us stupid. It's so backwards. It's just sad. And that's why I harp on this stuff so much, because I don't like seeing people, especially people who are potentially open to the idea of believing that the Bible is actually true when it comes to creation. And then these people get suckered over into the flat earth thing instead of young earth creationism like you should be. That's why we have a horizon, because it's horizontal. That's why we have... Yeah, as opposed to vertical, which is up and down. The usage of the word horizon does not prove anything. We have sea level, because the sea is level. Yes, because level is what happens with gravity. Level does not necessarily mean a perfect straight line, as in plane geometry. Doesn't mean that. It means level as in gravity pulls everything towards the center of the earth and it keeps a level 
a, a level a level sphere over a spherical earth the water keeps a level spherical ocean top that shouldn't be difficult to understand if you had the natural wisdom built in you to understand basic physics it's not curving you cannot call it sea level you will call it sea curved that's why we have tectonic plates and not tec- these are just he's just playing with words here why would we call them tectonic balls tectonic balls why why, why would we call them that they're not balls they're obviously plates on top of a sphere. We're not claiming that the plates are perfectly flat. The plates themselves are curved. Because those tectonic plates are just that, flat plates. Check out the soup. They're not flat. Find me a flat tectonic plate. Find me one that's flat. They're not. They're curved. How do I know? Because there's a bunch of curvature type stuff on top of those plates, such as, oh, I don't know, mountains, hills, and you can't see one side of the plate from the other. So they're not flat. Now, if you want to claim that there's no curvature of the earth behind those plates, you got a hard time trying to prove that one. But they are not what you claimed flat Suez canal 120 miles no uh, okay yeah this one needs to be focused on check out the Suez canal 120 miles no curvature it uh, never overflows it never drains and to all those <laughs> um okay uh, th- this one's just kind of funny it never overflows. No, 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 no. Go back to the actual beginning. There we go. Check out the Suez Canal. Check out the Suez Canal. The Suez Canal. 120 miles. 120 miles from one end to the other. No curvature. And there's no supposed curvature, he says. Where is his proof that there's no curvature? It never overflows. Because it never overflows. Why would it overflow if there was curvature? If there was curvature, that curvature would be bowing upward, not downward. So why would that somehow overflow? Actually, I don't know why you would ever think that it would overflow if there was curvature. Why are you claiming that that doesn't even make any sense? It never drains. And, and it never drains. Why? Are you, because you think gravity goes in a different direction. Why would it drain? Why would it overflow if there's curvature? Gravity holds it towards the center of the earth. Now, that's all he said, was there's no curvature because it never drains and it never overflows. Somebody makes scientific sense of that to me. Because I would not expect it to drain or overflow with there being curvature. I expect gravity to hold the sea level throughout the entire canal to be the same. That's not going to overflow. It's not going to drain. Now, here's the question that I ask people when they bring this up in the comments section of any of my Flat Earth videos. Can you see one end of the canal from the other end of the canal? 120 miles long. That's pretty long. Can you see one end of it from the other end? No. Why not? If it's so flat, then why can't you see one end of it from the other end? I'll even let you be elevated for, I I don't know, stand on the top of a building. Stand on the top of a one-story building on both sides of the canal. I'll give you that. I'll bet you you can't see each other. Prove me wrong. 
that right there is the only thing I need to prove this Suez Canal claim to be faulty. There is zero reason for his words to mean anything here. There's no reason to expect that it would drain or overflow, and that's the only proof he gave you that there was somehow a flat Suez Canal. And to all those astrologers out there who think they are astrologers teaching heliocentrism, like uh, Laura Eisenhower, the uh, granddaughter of her grandfather, um, the president of the U.S. The granddaughter of her grandfather. <laughs> That's genius, right? U.S., uh, calling herself a heliocentric astrologer. No such thing exists. I'm a very young age. Oh, okay, so I don't know who this woman is uh, uh, other than being the granddaughter of uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower. Okay, I get that. But I don't know anything about her as far as being an astrologer. And I don't really care. Apparently, he's going to go on now for a while talking about how astrology has this straight line going through it. Now, I don't know. I don't follow astrology. Uh, it's against my religion. I got nothing to do with it. So I really don't care about this that much. Uh, but my understanding is that that center line is basically going to be the same thing as the ecliptic. That line that the sun is in the center of and all the planets seem to orbit around the sun along that same general line. They're not all perfectly on that same line, but that is called the ecliptic. And it would make sense to me if that line happens to be the Being ecliptic. Wondering why the heck did I land in the Eisenhower family? I was faced with the opportunity to go to Mars. Some people wonder, why the heck didn't you go to Mars? Okay, and now, let me, let me let that finish. But my intuition told me from really recalling a, a, a youth filled with a lot of insight about what I was here to do was to not go anywhere. That is retarded. Laura, you are a false prophet. The line goes... Wow. Wow, this guy is just so vicious. Um, <clears throat> now, there's something that she says in there about an opportunity to go to Mars. And boy, that, that sure sounds awfully weird, right? Because that's not a brand new video. It's not like yesterday. It's not like somebody talking to Elon Musk about actually being the first person to actually go to Mars. Um I would love to understand the full context of that video because the word Mars does not necessarily mean the planet Mars. And it would make more sense to me if that was the name of a school or, or you know, some college or something somewhere that I'm not familiar with. And it might be that she was saying that she was planning on going to Mars, the school, or Mars, the city or Mars something other than the planet, okay? So we don't know what that clip was actually talking about. But if she was actually talking about going to actual, the physical planet Mars, then okay, she's crazy too. But we don't get that context. And that's the deceptive thing about one of these Dubai videos, is that they take all of these little things and mishmash them together without context, and it just becomes a big deceptive movie. That's what level is, and that's why I'm going through this. Going from the AC to the DC is called the line of the Earth, and it never moves. Yeah, and this gets into how astrology charts out their planet movements and stuff, and I don't claim to know anything about this. I'd rather I didn't know anything about astrology. Um, but still, mapping out the planet movements, it makes sense that one of these lines would be the ecliptic. I don't have a problem with that. AC to DC, ascendant to descendant, that's called the line of the earth, according to the astrologers of ancient. And that never moves, proving that there is no movement of the earth. That doesn't prove anything. Just because people write... Uh, 
draw a line on a piece of paper for thousands of years, that doesn't prove that the earth doesn't move. You're drawing a false conclusion because it's the conclusion you want to draw. Calculated in any astrological chart reading that you do, you never account the movement or the position of the earth in relation to any of these planets because it's that line of the earth which we call the horizon. I don't think that proves anything as far as the planet uh, shape. I, I think he's just using something that is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional sky, right? They're charting out the planets on a two-dimensional piece of paper, and they're doing that to represent what is inside a three-dimensional um, space. So, if you've got a problem with that line, that's your problem, not mine. Okay, lastly, the rich guy. <clears throat> An area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that was um, some audio left over from the Admiral Byrd clip. Um, that was a different video, obviously, but uh, the Admiral Byrd was the guy that said that uh, there's... There's more land uh, on Antarctica the size of North America. And that was when he just landed on the coast of Antarctica and said, yeah, there's more land that way, which is talking about the continent of Antarctica, which he was right. There's a bunch of land down there. And now we've got a space telescope uh, on the South Pole, etc. So that's what that video was or that little audio there. Let's move on with actual Tanner. Since late 2014, one of the biggest things I've heard, the earth is flat. Why don't you find the edge and fall off? What's, what's the fall off part? You know, he, he throws in a derogatory thing that somebody might say to a flat earther. But the point is, if the earth is flat, why don't you find the edge? Why do you got to throw in the and fall off part? I don't wish you death. I wish you life. I wish you would get smart about this stuff and come over to the actual God that created the actual globe and discover his son, Jesus Christ, and get filled with the Holy Spirit so that you don't swear every five words. You know, I want good for you people. And, and you people just want one thing. One thing, you want to prove the Earth is a different shape than everybody thinks. Why don't you make up an expedition and gather people and go find the edge and take a picture of the edge? Yeah, that's a great idea. Well, my response is, can you fall off the edge of a lake? Really? Did that really make him sound super smart? Can you fall off the edge of a lake? Where's the edge of a lake? Is there an edge to a lake? A pond? An ocean? Let's see if you have any imagination left in that brain of yours. <laughs> so now we have to imagine things. And he's criticizing our brain. Hmm. And pretend this is all the water in the world. This is the 71% covered earth-filled pond. All the water of the world. So let's just say this is trillions upon trillions upon trillions of gallons. You've got the continents, the islands in the middle, in the center where all compasses point. You can circumnavigate, circle the lake or the pond left or right. But as you venture outwards, Mm. Towards the banks. Towards the banks? Towards outer space. Towards outer space. This is the problem with flat earthers. They can't think in three dimensions. 
going towards the banks would not be the same thing as going towards outer space. Going towards the banks would be going north, south, east, or west. Going towards outer space would be going up. This guy doesn't understand the difference between going up or going out. North, south, east, west, up. There's four cardinal directions, north, south, east, west, but those aren't the only directions that a person can go. They can also go up or down. These flat earthers really do not have the, abil the ability to think three-dimensionally. And this is why most of them end up getting conned by this, all of this fake science stuff. What happens? Once you pass that 60th degree parallel and you hit the ice wall, the ice cliff of Antarctica, what happens? Do you, uh, uh, what, what happens? You fall off the edge. Is there an edge here? Is there an edge here? Uh, no, there's not an edge there. But where's your camera crew to go beyond that ice wall and then see where the edge is beyond the ice wall? Because we know the physics of water is to find and maintain level if you've been paying attention. Oh, yeah. If you've been paying attention, you would know that gravity takes care of that just fine on a globe. Thanks. And also, water must be contained. Gravity does it just fine. Thanks. It is contained. We climb up the banks and we keep going outward. Really? Climb up the banks and keep going Southward. outward. What happens to their control? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I miss a word? What happens to their control when nope, 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 nope. it is contained? We climb up the banks and we keep going outward, southward. Outward, southward. Go to the banks and keep going southward. What happens to their control when millions of people travel? Beyond the 60th parallel. They knew this was going to get out. They knew people were going to wake up. What if Star Wars is true? What if this no, no, wait, extra wait, 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 terrestrial, wait, 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 wait. these extra wait, terrain... Wait, 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 wait. You just gave me some questions. <laughs> what happens to their control when millions of people travel... Beyond the 60th parallel. What happens to they knew their this was control? Get out. They who's, knew who's this people they? were going to wake up. Because this what they Star doesn't Wars exist. Is true? My, my computer is not responding perfectly here. It's uh, getting uh, to be a long video, I, I would imagine. So it's not liking uh, when I hit the pause button here. So I got to get this over with here. <clears throat> Let's just let True. it go. What if this extra terrestrial, these extra terrains, they're telling us the truth minus the vacuum of space? Because they got extra to terrains. There's zero evidence of land beyond the ice wall, these extra terrains that your recent flat earth maps show that there's somehow more continents beyond the ice ring. There's zero evidence of any of that. It's all wishful thinking, imagination. You don't have any actual evidence of that. You just wish that that was true would spin on it, don't they? Star Wars, Star Trek, what if you Globers can have your Star Wars and your Star Trek at the same time? What? Isn't that awesome? How does that make you feel? Oh, except for the space part. You feel? The timeline goes as follows. So in 1955, Operation Deep Freeze starts. And when Admiral Richard Byrd gets back, he comes on live television and tells us he found more land. That's yes, he found land because he landed on the edge of Antarctica, the coastline of Antarctica, and didn't travel that far inland, but he knew that there was a lot of land inland. If he would have kept going further south, further in into the continent of Antarctica, he would have discovered that there was a land there roughly the size of North America. That's what he said. Size of North America. 
They yeah. quickly start NASA. And President Eisenhower calls over the Nazi traitors and Operation Paperclip to start the upper space mind control program. Don't look out there. Look up here. Look, everybody. We're going to the moon. Then, in 1959, 12 nations started the Antarctic Treaty, followed by 42 more nations where they have decided you or I cannot travel or explore any part of Antarctica south. That is not what it says. It does not say that. Or past the 60th parallel. Now, here's some words from it. Uh, no, no, no. This is not from that. This is from um, uh, the expedition notes of somebody. The voyage of... Uh, I can't see that. i got to take my glasses off. HMS Challenger, back in the 1800s, and now here, here's here's the here's what happens with a flat earther's brain when they read something like this. Look here. Uh, on the 7th, uh, when he again reached the parallel of 78 degrees, again to find himself arrested by the icy barrier. No, watch. Without military clearance, without the aid of a guided tour. Do you really think that this is just a coincidence? Arrested. Oh. See? See what they did? They pulled out that single word, cherry-picked that single word, to try and make you think that back in the 1800s, there was some sort of military force by the ice wall that will arrest you if you try to discover Antarctica. That word arrested does not mean that cops came by and picked them up and threw them in the paddy wagon and drove them away. That's not what arrested means in this sentence, especially back in the 1800s. It simply means like when your heart goes into cardiac arrest. It means that they were stopped because there was a big ice wall in front of them. That's all it means. They were prevented from moving further because something was in their way. They were arrested. That's what it means. But this is how the flat earth brain malfunctions when they read through this old stuff looking for proof for what they believe, they find this word and they completely misinterpret what it's talking about. And then they put a little white light around it to make people really quickly ignore all of this, just ignore everything that this is contextually talking about and just see the word arrested because that's the proof that people are getting arrested by trying to go to Antarctica, right? Ugh. This flat earth thing is such a huge scam. I mean, it is not just accidental. I firmly believe there are people that are behind this whole thing knowingly trying to deceive people. And I believe that their main purpose of all of this is ultimately to try and make Christianity, Bible believers, look stupid. That's ultimately the goal of this PSYOP. I don't know if Dubay is part of that PSYOP or if he's just a uh, willing participant who was foolish enough to, to believe all of this. But I continue to call him a con man. It's really hard to believe that he would actually believe all of this stuff as thoroughly as he does. I think he's in on it. But who knows? He could be just that foolish. Just a coincidence. I think we're almost done. Imagine here. they find more land. Imagine there is more, more land out there. More to explore, more to reside, more resources. You think, um, you think they tell you and I about it? Well, grammatically, that should be, do you think they would tell you and me about it? Because you would say, do you think they would tell me? Do you think they would tell you? Do you think they would tell you and me? You don't say, do you think they would tell I about it? You would say, yeah. So, 
gramma- uh, grammatical uh, corrections aside, I have finished with this entire level thing, and it's... It's really disheartening to see how the church is being attacked by something so ridiculous. You know, when people argue over uh, Calvinism or Arminianism, uh, or they argue over a local flood or a global flood, you know, this kind of thing just does not compare. It really doesn't. The flat earth controversy is enigma of its own. It really is. And it just astounds me how some people just do not have the wisdom to understand basic physics. And so they end up not learning how how to prove the globe when they were young. None of us really did. We didn't go into, uh, you know, advanced science classes as a kid. So none of us really know the details of how to prove the globe. But then the Dubai videos come around and they show the detailed proof for a flat earth. Now, it's all fake, of course. It's all fake science. But they fall for it. And because they didn't learn the specifics first when they were a kid, they just go with it, thinking, well, I used to believe in the globe and now I got shown the truth. And so now I believe in the flat earth, they think, right? But they never actually go back and look at the actual details of what proves the globe that we were never really taught as kids. That's what I did. That's what Dave McKeegan did. That's what uh, Professor Dave did. That's what plenty of us have done to go and look at the actual science that proves that the Earth is, in fact, observably a globe. But we have the ability to understand it, and they don't. So instead of seeing the evidence for the globe in the actual science that's in McKeegan videos or whatever, instead of looking at that, they can't understand it. Now their confirmation bias is in the way, and they'll only see the things that, that confirm the flat earth. And then when something else comes along that proves the globe, it creates cognitive dissonance in their head. And it's not enough to knock down their entire flat earth mountain. They'll ignore the one thing, and then just hype everything else up on their side, and ignore the one thing. But then... When another one thing comes along, they'll just throw that out. And another one thing comes along, they'll just throw that out. Another one thing comes along. Eventually, there's a mountain of evidence against them, but they still refuse to believe any of it, and now it's because it's pride. Pride in these flat earthers refuses to let them admit they got conned. They did not have the ability to understand good science, and they got tricked because they were naive, because they were gullible, and they weren't good at science. And they'd have to admit to all their friends and family, to all the people on the internet, they'd have to admit to themselves that they were dumb, that they were whatever word you want to use, that they got conned, that they... You know, that that makes a person feel dumb to themselves. That's why I use that word, right? If you get conned by something, you feel pretty stupid at the end of it, right? As we should, right? And that ridicule is used to teach us so that we don't do something that ridiculous again. But the flat earthers, they don't learn from that. All of the evidence in the world exists to disprove their fantasy, but they don't care. doesn't matter. They would rather stay in their bubble to protect their ego. And sadly, that's that's where they will eventually die. And sadly, I don't think there is an off ramp from this flat earth into the actual gospel. Because if they do believe anything of the gospel, they'll believe in the resurrection part, but they will not believe in the repentance part. 
So I stick to my claim that still to this day, I have not met a flat earther that I believe is truly in good soil saved. And that's why I fight against it. Because if you're, if you're deceived by flat earth, you're also going to get deceived by one saved, always saved. And uh, whatever, you know, the Hebrew roots stuff or what other uh, deceptions Satan has built up in the church. So, okay, this video is way too long, but I just had to do all three of these to get this project done. And now level is over. God bless.